Hi there, so today's topic is gonna be about AF bolts or AF archery. Um, I decided to make this video because uh, a lot of people are actually using this brand nowadays and uh, they would like to know more about the brand and uh, whether it's gonna be a brand that they would like to have or not. Um, for me, I have quite a neutral view about this brand. Uh, there are good and there are some bad. Uh, overall, I think it is more on the positive side. Uh, it is definitely not a bad brand. Uh, let's see what I'm gonna say about it. Well, the brand itself, um, I have some, some of the bowls over here. Um, the good thing about them is that their pricing are kind of affordable. They are affordable. So, um, I can't give you an exact number because that's also one of their uh, whether you look at it as a good or bad thing I think it's a good thing so their pricing tend to be uh, up and down and all around so you might see it like maybe 200 something dollars now and then maybe next month it's like I don't know 260 and then the following month may, you may have a discount of 200 with free shipping things like that so it's kind of up and down and all around i can't tell you exactly the, the price right now um, there's always price change uh, but the good thing is you get to have a good deal right so if you catch the right moment you get fantastic deal so just look up to their uh, website and see what's uh, the latest special deal of the week uh, you will catch something that is uh, great i mean if, if the bowl works for you that is gonna be a great deal okay uh, that's about their pricing, very affordable. Um, however, in terms of selection, I'm actually a little bit kind of confused. I might be confused in terms of selection. So, um, most of the other brands that I have been selling, they tend to, once they create a product, they tend to keep that product for quite a long time and they keep improving upon that existing product. So, in the case of uh, AF Archery, um, they tend to go on listing and then the, maybe a few months later it disappears and then after that maybe once in a while maybe it might come back or it might be gone forever I have no idea so I'm gonna give you some example of bows that uh, has ceased to exist on their website um, so for example like this one here um, this is a uh, their Turkish bow a fiberglass version so it was on their website for a while and then suddenly they decided not to make it anymore it's no longer on their website so is there a problem with the bowl? Uh, I don't know but it kind of feel weird um, so as a seller's uh, point of view from, from the way I see it it's kind of like wait a minute right are you guys sure about this product and then just oh it's, it's gone so um, is there a problem with the product? I, I don't know it's, uh, it's just a weird thing about um, AF decision with the uh, products. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, you have to look at what is available on the website. I can't give you an exact one. So uh, this one, uh, it's kind of like a Scythian bow, Korean bow mix. I don't know, but this one has been discontinued as well. Uh, is there a problem with the bow? I don't know. I, I think the bow is actually pretty good. It's a very decent bow uh, at a very good price. So why is it down? I don't know, I don't know, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, recently, I also noticed two other bowls that went down. Um, <laughs> like this one here, this is actually kind of like a, a hand bowl. Uh, I think it's a great bowl, I don't have a problem with it. But it's no longer on the website. As of me making the video, it's no longer on the website, so... I'm scratching my head as well, I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, another one, this one is actually quite an interesting one. So this is uh, the Egyptian angular bow, they call it Kadesh. So uh, I have also noticed that this bow is no longer on their website. So maybe from a bias point of view, it, it kind of demotivates a little bit because you will feel like, wait a minute, is there a problem with the product? Why, why delisting it? Uh, because if, if there's no problem, you probably won't delist it, right? So there must be something wrong, maybe? that you would like to know um, and AF's decision to, to bring them up and down uh, makes us question the product itself. Uh, is there a problem in the product though? Um, it's hard to say. 
I have in the past seen the bowls in a very very bad quality. I have actually been through quite a long time with AF. So I went through a time where they had very bad quality. But at the same time, I also noticed that over the years, uh, quality has significantly improved. Aesthetically, the bowl looks so much better nowadays. Uh, does it shoot better? Um, I, I, I have a mix when it comes to how good it shoots. So there was a time where many many years ago the quality was just bad. Like I'm gonna say it up or it's bad. Um, and then they improved and uh, we sort of see the uh, shrink quality is actually pretty good. Uh, for the price, it is a really good value, it's a good bow, uh, although they don't look that good. And then they start to improve on the aesthetics. Nowadays the bow looks pretty good. Uh, but in terms of uh, shooting quality, I, I would say it's not as good as there was this one time where it was good or great. Nowadays it's, it's not as good as that one time. So uh, yeah, things have been uh, up and down, up and down, and I'm not very sure what, what their decision down the road. Um, I, I just, I just, I can, I can just tell you from uh, both I had been through. All right, so um, the uh, the pricing great, affordable. If you can catch special deal, great for you. Um, product selection kind of weird, up and down, all around. And then um, shooting performance or and, and draw quality. All right. So this is something that uh, I would say is on the bad side. It's on the bad side. So what exactly? Okay, let, let me be clear. So on their website, the draw length that is the maximum draw length that is labeled tend to be uh, inaccurate. Okay, it tends to be inaccurate. So if they say a bow can be drawn to 32 inch, uh, don't expect it to draw the two inch. Okay, it's not gonna draw that, that length. You might have to deduct two or three inches. So for example, uh, let's take this Turkish bow right here. On their website, it says 32 inch draw length. Uh, so let me just kind of show you. And this is like 28, and I feel that the bow is very hard, it's stiff. A bit more 29 here, it's really, really, really tight. 30 inch, I can barely make it. Uh, I can barely make it to 30 inch. Okay, if you were to draw it to 31, I think this is on the verge of breaking and they rate it at 32. Okay, I'm a bit confused there, I'm not sure why and what drives that decision. Uh, it's just, I just think it's not a very accurate representation of the actual drawing that you can reach. Uh, and this is not the only one. So, for example, like this tar bow here is also labeled at, the, at 32 inch but I can actually draw it to 31, although kind of between 30, 30 and 31 is kind of stacking. So 28 here, 29, 30, mm, kind of struggle. Uh, with the thumbnail, I can, I can reach 31, but it's kind of struggle between 30 and 31, and they rate it to 32. Okay, um, maybe it can reach, but I would suggest just draw to 31. Um, and. Uh, and so on with the other books. So I have uh, one of my friends, he recently bought the Yuan bow. Okay, I don't have the Yuan bow right here, but I'm just gonna hold this really kind of similar. So the Yuan bow was rated at 34 inch, but at, at about 29, 30 inch draw length, you'll feel the bow is already stacking. Uh, you may be able to reach 31. If, if you really like fight through it, maybe 32, I can't see how it could reach 34. Uh, so, draw length, okay? Draw length wise, you, you have to actually kind of deduct from what the claim amount, the claim maximum draw length. Otherwise, you may be surprised that the bow may not draw as smoothly as you might think. So, that is just a, uh, that's how I see it and how I feel when it comes to draw length. Uh, in terms of uh, speed, hand shot and those shooting qualities. Uh, speed is actually pretty good. I can tell you for sure that the AF bows in terms of speed is actually pretty good. They have actually, uh, the Sears are actually made quite slim. Have a look here, it's pretty slim. 
so they tend to make the bow uh, shoot quite efficiently so that's the good thing about them uh, but but hand shot and vibration is not that great uh, there there is hand shot and there is vibration in the bows um, some of them can be bad some of them not that bad so for example the turkish being a smaller bow and the tartar being a smaller bow they do not vibrate as much but their larger bows can be pretty bad so for example kadesh since it's a fairly large bow a long bow um, it does actually have limb vibration oh since I'm, I'm talking about limb vibration i might still elaborate it so a lot of people actually confuse hand shock and vibration and they, they do test by doing this okay let me tell you this this thing that you do here has nothing to do with vibration it has absolutely nothing to do with vibration this is called string oscillation so in a system where you have two nodes at the end and you have a string in the middle uh, suspended across when you do this of course it's going to make noise that's how musical instrument make noise uh, but the thing is this string oscillation when you do this test here it is a low frequency vibration and so you will hear that hum for quite some time that's normal but when you actually shoot the ball okay, when you actually shoot the ball it comes in really high speed uh, and hits really hard that vibration there is a high frequency vibration and it dissipates energy much faster because it's a high frequency vibration you don't feel that high frequency vibration right so when you do tests like this it tells you absolutely nothing absolutely nothing what you want to know is when you shoot the bow how is the hand shot the hand shot is a punch in the hand and there's no other way other than to put an arrow in there and shoot it right you have to shoot an arrow to know if it has any shock or vibration uh, in this case I can tell you that there is a uh, limb vibration so what exactly is the limb vibration so when you shoot this particular bow you can actually feel either one or the other the top or the bottom you can actually feel the direction where one of the limb kicks all right it kicks after the shot that is limb vibration not this this is not this is just string oscillation and it doesn't disturb it doesn't it doesn't uh, affect your shot limb vibration however does and that has to do with the limbs are not uh, well tailored because for this mass production bow they don't tailor the bow they just put it like they just complete the bow draw up to check the polish done right they don't tailor the bow that's how they produce a lot of bows very quickly so the larger the bow is the more uh, unsynchronized the, the two limbs are so the larger the bow is the more vibration and shock you will feel compared to the smaller friends like, like this one here with a very short limb so with the shorter limbs shorter bow um, you can kind of cheat you can kind of cheat and just don't tailor it and the bow will still end up pretty okay but the larger the bow is uh, the worse it will be if you do not tailor the bow properly so the Kadesh at this size the lower limb tend to kick after the shot you will feel like oh just want to kick forward and you know exactly it's the bottom limb you can feel it as a direction uh, so that is what I call a limb vibration you can think of it as like a the limb dances the limb want to dance after the shot you can feel which limb it is and which direction it is all right uh, that would be uh, in terms of vibration um, hand shot I mentioned uh, what else um, okay so in terms of uh, quality selection I guess AF tend to offer you uh, two choices the uh, cheaper models uses uh, domestic fiberglass China produced fiberglass and uh, the uh, higher range which uses bare core fiberglass so of course the China produced uh, fiberglass is cheaper right now as of this video is in the range of $200 uh, whereas uh, the uh, bear paw is in the range of $300 so uh, there is a price difference uh, but okay, this is the big part 
Is it worth it? Um, you be the judge. I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you what I feel about it. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna just pick the Turkish bowl because I had to have the premium bare paw version of the Turkish and as well as the uh, kind of basic version, the cheaper one. Okay, so these two bowls are identical. They are identical bowl. Uh, just that this one here is the bare paw version. Um, you probably can't see very well, but they call it the bird's eye maple. So it's a little bit more uh, decorated compared to this one here. This is not even real wood. This is actually a printed wood on the glass. It's just a wood pattern. Um, it's not really wood there. So now between these two, the bear paw version is more beautiful. They have a uh, more colorful knot piece here compared to the one the basic one is just like black and this one here you may not be able to see well but there's stripes of red and black um, the, the sear wood here they use in this case is walnut which is pretty this one here I believe is uh, ash wood so it's either ash or maple but uh, this is equally as efficient though it may not be as pretty um, so just now I mentioned about the uh, glass and uh, the appearance of the wood. This one here is real uh, bird's eye maple. The other one is not even real wood. So there is a difference in terms of material here. Uh, okay, you might notice that uh, there is this binding. So on AF's website, they do not actually have these bindings. So it's because in my country, um, if you don't bind the bows, there is more problem uh, with the Breakage. There's going to be more bowls breaking. So therefore, on our bowls, you might notice that all the bowls have bindings. So it is to protect the bowl against the lamination. Um, okay, so the grip, not that much of a difference. So in this case, we have like, I requested for a crazy horse ladder here. Um, and then uh, this is their premium version. The bare palm version looks like that. Uh, both the grip is crazy horse leather, it's just that this one here is black and this one is green. Not too much difference, honestly not too much difference other than those that I mentioned, a little bit of the appearance. So how about when you shoot the bow? How, when you shoot the bow, does it feel any different? Okay, and this is where I feel that it's not very worth it. Okay, I don't feel that it's very worth it. Um, because, and I'm not even being like biased or anything. I wasn't the one who spotted it. So I... I got both the bowls and I let my friend try it. I didn't try it, I wasn't the first to try it. So my friend tested it. Um, my expectation is that the premium version should be better. It should have less headshot at least, right? Because we expect the better, it, it's, more, it's more expensive, like 50% more, it should be better, right? Um, when he shot it, he said, oh, it feels the same. And I was like, Wait a minute, are you sure? So I give it a try and um, it feels the same. <laughs> it does feel the same. In terms of draw smoothness, it's the same. Like, I don't feel any different. Uh, but that's also because both, are the, both of them are the same geometry. So the draw smoothness being the same is expected. Um, in terms of speed, feels the same. In terms of hand shot and vibration, Feels the same. Both of them have the same hand shot and vibration. So if you judge it from a performance point of view, uh, I don't think it's very worth it because now you pay 50% more, but it really feels the same. If you blind test these two, you could tell them apart. It is the same. Uh, aesthetically, they are using a different material. So um, if you think that paying 50% more for the red time maple. Maybe you like you like this wood. So if you think the aesthetic difference is important to you, then go with the premium version. But if you are looking for value, I think that if it's available, the basic version is great value because I feel that it is literally the same bow. Uh, minus a little bit of the aesthetics it's just the same um, if you cover them up blind test it you cannot tell them apart it 
is that similar. Um, so is it good or bad? Well, you tell me. I just think that uh, AF makes very good value bows, especially these one, very good value bows. But when it comes to the premium one, uh, I have mixed reaction because I feel that their basic version is so good that it literally matches their premium version. Uh, and so I kind of feel like I do not know why would I want to spend more on the premium version. But maybe, maybe you have a different thought about that. So that's my opinion. Uh, overall, the brand, I will say above average, above average. The smaller bows shoot better, shoots better. The larger bows, no, no, no. I have tested some of the bows and uh, the larger bows, no, mm, no. Nah. So you, you don't decide.